Hi, I'm Alex Ross, and I am a comic book artist. The first thing that ever appealed to me about comic books would be the characters, of course. Um, I was drawn to the fantastic characters I saw on television from uh, live action and animation, and in particular seeing uh, men dressed up in these brightly colored outfits like uh, the fellow who dressed as Spider-Man on The Electric Company when I was a young boy. I'd never seen anything cooler in my life than this guy running around with the red and blue outfit and you couldn't see his face at all, and he looks exactly like the comic book character. I thought, well, I'd like to either dress like that or draw that, and so, of course, at a, at a point in my life I've done both, but uh, I was attracted then to always drawing the things that I was seeing on TV, and my mom had been an artist before, and she also knew what she was seeing in me was a passion for these things that were in periodical form, and she got me my first comic books, which were adaptations of the things I was seeing on TV. I was uh, getting those when I was around five years old, maybe four, and uh, eventually beginning a love affair with the characters of that art form and the art form itself. I made loads and loads of my own comic books by taking a 8x10 sheet of paper and folding it over and creating a little mini comic that I would draw the first cover of and then, you know, open it up, you get maybe one or two pages stuffed inside of panels of things happening and little bit by little bit over time those would become more elaborate as I would get older and I never disconnected from comics the entire adolescence I went through. Yeah, my mother made my life easier in a way by her being an artist before me even though I wasn't always looking at her doing that job growing up. She was in my mid-teens back in the working world doing a regular illustration job and that even more confirming for me that there was a reality to pursuing uh, art as a career. I always had the delusion of myself being a full-time working comic book artist, but you never know. My first job coming out of art school was to work for the Leo Burnett ad agency where I was hired to do storyboards. And uh, that was a very fortunate gig because it was really all the same things that I use as a comic book artist. Just like the rest of my workmates, we would all photograph one another as reference for our storyboards and, you know, you wouldn't go to extremes of costuming or whatnot, but you get a simple pose with lighting and whatnot, and then you could transform the details to fit whatever you needed. I want to always be on that cutting edge. So in the process of going to art school, it was the ambition to try and learn how to create the most elaborate art style that I could for my chosen medium. So there was never any question for me about wanting to paint comics. It was just a matter about when would I be allowed to. My first uh, comics published work was doing a series based upon the Terminator franchise, and that was called Terminator the Burning Earth. It was definitely a, a job that could have broken my spirit completely because I was working the eight hours at the ad agency, coming home, and then doing another seven to eight hours in the evening. I had gotten myself into a terrible commitment there because I thought, Oh, I'm so fast, I could paint a portrait with a minimal background of um, a subject in, in oil painting class in art school. I could paint that in one afternoon. So I thought, well, if I can do that in just three hours, then I could easily do a whole comic page a day. It's a lot harder than that. Uh, every comic page has multiple panels in it, and each panel can be its own little composition with so many elements and multiple figures, background details, action, things that are of all varying degrees of difficulty. And if you were hoping to reference those things, you need to have more time built into the process. So you're not going to easily knock through a page a day if you're going to do the kind of artwork that I was endeavoring to do. My breakthrough project, Marvels, was initially based upon the inspiration to simply create uh, an anthology book that would feature painted artists like I am back when I was just looking for a foot in the door and not knowing what kind of project you could create I was hoping to have a platform to get other work so I thought that I could be one of the various storytellers who's allowed to do stories set in whatever point of Marvel history my inspiration came from 
the comic book that started the entire company, which was Marvel Comics number no. one from 1939. I had always loved reading stories that featured the original Human Torch from the 40s, and this was the book that premiered that character as well as the Submariner. So I did a 12-page story that reinterpreted the Human Torch's origin just to give them a sample of this is how it could look. And I pitched it to an editor at Marvel that had hired me to do a short story in one of their then anthologies, which was a science fiction one. He took my inspiration of wanting to work with the original Human Torch as sort of a history review, where all the stories would be kind of going through the history. But it didn't just come from us, it came from Marvel kind of rejecting the anthology format first and saying, you know what, you guys should create a cohesive structure with a single character who observes the growing Marvel Universe through the years, going from the 40s through the 60s and 70s. And that's when my writer, Kurt Busiek, really took over and really helmed this in a new direction. So it had everything that I wanted it to become, but it became a much better thing than what I had envisioned. I was very emboldened by how Marvel's was taking shape, that I felt as soon as it had started that this was going to be a comic book classic in the making. I had a very strong head on my shoulders about where I thought the art was and where I thought the story was. And since not all that was my concept, I wanted to craft a narrative that would be completely my vision, my great epic. As I envisioned it, I wanted to approach the DC characters and I wanted to stick the person in the midst of that story as, instead of creating a character, as the photographer is in Marvel's, I wanted to make that character be based upon a very specific person. In this case, I wanted it to be my dad. Partly because I thought, my dad's this great-looking guy with the white hair and beard who would be fantastic-looking in a comic book. And he'd be unique because you wouldn't see a lot of characters like him. And I thought, well, why change his vocation? Why make him some guy who's tangentially related to these characters, but in fact make him completely unrelated to their world? It eventually was taking shape as something that would be a big superhero war that my father's character would be a witness to. And one of my friends had given me the idea of, why don't you set it in the future? You know, that way you could write whatever the heck you want with these characters. You can make some of them older and do this, that, and the other. And that just opened up the floodgates of imagination for the various things of it, what it could be. Kingdom Come was developed as a reaction to a very violent time in comics and saying that, in a way, this was going to have to all come to a full boil. It was designed to be a parable for the times we lived in, for what was happening in comics publishing, effectively. That it was a world where there were too many superheroes, where superheroes had almost become a percentage of the population, but that their strong superhuman prowess was ultimately going to have to collide with, with humanity to a devastating end. It seemed to speak to what was occurring that everybody could identify with as comics readers. At certain points, I've gotten a lot of attention for the projects I've done so much in general media, uh, in newspapers and magazines, that um, I've been able to be a strong front man in some cases for expanding the perception of what comics can be seen as. And I had thought, if I take the original art in its bulk without splitting it up and uh, auction off that work for the proceeds to go to a specific charity, that that association of that action will be attributed not strictly to me, but also to the characters themselves. So that you would see Superman's efforts as going directly into the hands of UNICEF and then directly in the hands of people who could use that. It was all with the attempt of trying to sort of fulfill a grand ambition of there's something more at root here more within the ideals of heroism to achieve. That the term hero should not be thrown around lightly. That if we were to apply that to this art form and to these characters, that there's something we can do with that. I have interests to want to speak to social issues and to try and seem more contemporary, but I'm still so drawn to the magic and physicality of superhero construction and superhero design and, and 
rendering things that are more fantastic because when you have a realistic art style like mine and then you use it say like Rockwell did to render realistic scenes and people for me that feels like something that I'm not bringing you something that is that extra X factor I need to take it somewhere else and that's why I've always felt very strongly married to the comic book archetypes or fantasy archetypes I've wanted to sort of find that hybrid that I can do that thing which uses my art style on things that might seem more fantastical but can speak to people in a very modern and contemporary way, speak to real issues. Well, it's been nice to see a legitimacy sort of granted the subject matter that now superheroes are not nearly as scoffed at as they had been um, because that was painful for a very long time to feel that as you're a fan of the stuff that it was always not just unappreciated by people who didn't know the medium, but that it was so clearly just reviled. It's nice to know the movies can now be this fundamental part of our culture that no matter what, every year, you're getting a certain amount of superhero movies. And guess what? They're the biggest money-making movies. And in some ways, that's a fulfillment of a destiny they've been owed. It's nice to know we're in a different state now, and I just want to see the actual core medium still get a greater readership and appreciation. And maybe that'll happen through new media advances now with the way people are reading things digitally now. Or maybe you could still have a renewed life for print. Anything's possible. I've been holding out hope to, to keep working in an art form that itself has never gotten truly the fair due from a general public that it has truly earned and deserves. I would think that people have connected with my work in large part because I've been like them as a fan. I've brought in my own passion for the source material of growing up reading comics and I chose this career to go after this art form and to me it was an art form filled with personal expression and personal ambitions, personal uh, views of the world. The idea of using fantastic representations of humanity to express commentary on humanity, uh, commentary upon the things that we should either struggle against or struggle for. And uh, I've always thought that personal interpretation is intertwined with the comic book art form.